The comments on this videotape were dubbed in by Jim and Ann Wake in November 1986. We boarded Indian Affairs boat, the Chippewan, at Waterways, Alberta, which was on the Clearwater River adjacent to its confluence with the Athabasca River and Fort McMurray. In these scenes, we were approaching and now passing the Indian village of Fort Mackay in Tar Sands country, some 40 miles or so below Fort McMurray on the west bank of the Athabasca River. All our worldly goods were on the barge being pushed by the Chippewan. Now we've reached Port Chippewan at the west end of Lake Athabasca. And this is our first view of it early that morning. I always remember your waking me up and saying, Fort Chippewan, dead ahead. Here's the Chippewan tied up to the dock at Fort Chippewan. There's Valerie. That looks like Sylvia and Carl coming last. Where are you, Jim? Oh, here he is. That's the family group beside the school at Fort Chip. First of July games at Fort Chip. Sack race. This stone cairn was a erected on Monument Hill at Fort Chippewan above Lake Athabasca to commemorate the building of the first Fort Chippewan at Old Fort Point near the mouth of the Athabasca River and the exploration by Sir Alexander Mackenzie of the large ri river subsequently named after him. Family's out for a walk in the woods behind the village, waving branches to discourage the mosquitoes. Having a picnic on the rocks behind the village. This is the lakefront, doing a bit of swimming. Wasn't the best of places to go swimming, but enjoyable nevertheless. It was because people had thrown stuff in the water. Yeah, we were always finding cans garbage, broken bottles, and all kinds of junk. This is Jim's birthday party in our living room. This was before We'd got all our possessions unpacked. Most of them were outside in crates, cases and crates covered up with tarpaulin. This is a barbecue at the RCMP barracks. The man in charge at that time was Corporal Roy Shaw, who I trained with in Rockcliffe in 1941. Valerie leading the group here, as you know, we were thinking of adopting 
salary and had taken her on probation, but it did, just didn't work out, so we had to take her back. Sylvia and other swimming, playing at uh, Sandy Bay. Jim experimenting with lighting a fire, Boy Scout style, using only not more than two matches. And Jim, you did a good job too. I remember that. Yeah. That was a much cleaner beach than in front of the village. We went down there frequently. Now we're cleaning up the Anglican church yard. Had an all day work party. Yes, we built a new house for the former rector and uh, there had been all sorts of rubbish left behind from that. Here's Jack Stewart and family going to the dock at ship. Jack was the Indian superintendent and my boss. MASL, McMurray Air Services Limited. Unloading a barge at the ship dock. This was the purser who was subsequently able to help us real well when we were moving out of the north. and ride on the first snow of that season. There's the last plane of the season arriving. You'd have to ch chop the ice away from the edge of the dock in order for the plane to get in close enough Yes, you can see him here trying to break the ice. Pretty cold for this kind of work. The time of isolation when the water was freezing over and we were shut off from the outside world until the ice was strong enough to bear there, look, a planes. Whole, a whole truckload of mail. There are the boats, some of them frozen in by the dock. Carl's birthday party. Strange, it always comes at Halloween time. That's Johnny Stewart waving. Oh, this is five years. My gracious. Time is marching on. Oh, my. Goodness. This is cutting Christmas trees. And December 1959, wanted one for our house, one for the Sunday school, and one for the church. The Sunday school tree would be in the parish hall. At the time we were there, they had a Mr. Wagner, a 
ministerial student taking services until the fall when he had to go back to college and then I was asked to be a lay reader until a replacement comes. So this was a fun day. We got the trees all back safely. Quite a job hauling three trees out of the bush. Now this is buffalo meat. That's sweet grass in Wood Buffalo National Park which wasn't too far away from Fort Chippewan. And this aircraft was taking this meat down to a clavic and, and uh, tuk tuk for the natives down there. Hello, this is Jim Wake. You may be interested to know I started to work for the Indian Affairs Branch of the Federal Department of Citizenship and Immigration when I accepted the position of clerk for at the Athabasca Indian Agency and we moved to Fort Chippewan in June 1959. Christmas 1959 at Fort Chippewan. The dollhouse that Jim made for Sylvia. And the doll chest that Jim made. There's Carl's Tonka truck. Uh, they have all found kinds of gifts. They were very bountifully blessed by all the gifts sent in from relatives from outside. I think Plus we received a whole mail bag full of that was just for us, full of uh, mail at Christmas time. Looks like Sylvia got a new pair of slippers, too. Yes. Yeah, checkerboard. Shirt. Oh, wow, look at that dump truck. What is that, Carl? I don't recognize that. Might be the farm. Oh, it's that comes up next. Oh. Here's the farm. Here's the farm. Ah. Carl really? had an awful lot of fun with this. Not only the barn, but there were some animals and other props. And Valerie, she got a dolly bed, dolls, lots of other things. This is looking through our picture window from the outside at Ann and the kids inside beside our Christmas tree. Our home was a newly built three bedroom government house with full plumbing, electricity and oil burning furnace. <clears throat> now, most of the villagers out on New Year's Day to attend various outdoor celebrations organized by the community association. The guy was the instigator of these events, having experienced them at Old Crow, there being nothing planned for for Chippewa that year. So this was a race of probably 10 miles, five miles up the river and back again a different way. Not up the river, up the lake shore. There, this dog team not being handled very well and they had to have help to get them on the track again. Now oh, there's the winner coming back, the first man back. There's another one coming in. This 
with Mike Kelpin, with Ann. Mike was the manager of the Hudson's Bay Post. That's my caribou parka that Jim gave me when we were first engaged. It's got little hearts around the bottom. Here's John, RCMP constable, and his girlfriend. I think she was eluded, was she not? Mm-hmm. Looking from the lake back to the village. It's Ma's restaurant there in the background. The team's racing across the Potato Island and back. Some of the girls from the Indian Residential School Jerry, the male nurse for National Health and Welfare, the only medical health station at Fort Chip. There's the chief of the Cree Indians, Horace Wiley, Eric, the radio operator for DOT, Mike Kelpin. There's Jerry again, fellow works at the Bay, Fred Marcel, chief of the Chippewa Indians, and Barry, also working at the Bay. Some of the teams coming in from the race to Potato Island and back. Here are the snowshoers racing. Notice they're just wearing their shirts. That's very hot business running in snowshoes, even though it is below zero. Sophie McRae in her cabin at Old Fort Point, some 20 miles away. might see a wild fox out there on the snow running away from us. We're in a snowmobile near Sweetgrass, Wood Buffalo National Park. Kids getting their bicycles out for the first time in the spring of 1960. mail plane to come in while there was still ice strong enough for it to land on. That mail plane meant so much to us. It Contact sure with the outside world. It sure There's Mouse Island. You can see why it was called Mouse Island, can't you? Yeah. Here's Mike and Mary Kelpin, Hudson's Bay manager. Oh, this is the first plane on floats of the season. Ann and Jerry and others on the dock There's watching the first boat. Mouse Island, doesn't that show up well now? So there's the first boat of that season pulling two barges. <coughs> We'd always be wondering if it had our orders on the boat, wondering whether this or that had come on in that we'd ordered some time ago. However, the first boat usually went right on by, always a disappointment. There is a team of horses in a wagon by the lake shore stuck in some very gooey mud reminiscent of Saskatchewan gumbo. And now you see another boat with some barges nearly free of the ice. We have seen them caught in the ice for days as mere specks on the lake.
as the boat comes closer, we can see this one is pushing four barges, and it will stop at Chip. The boats you have seen were operated by the Northern Transportation Company Limited, referred to locally as NTCL. Well, there's a lakefront scene at Fort Chippewan, taken from Monument Hill. They had to be so careful coming in the dock because they could have bumped into it and taken it away. Now, the uh, Chippewan is tied up at the dock, preparation for going on a treaty paying trip. We went up to Fort Mackay and paid treaty there and also called in at various camps, Indian camps, on the way back. This is a Sunday school picnic, the first one that they ever had there, as far as the people could remember. And that's because we planned it. If you watch, you'll see Carol Waitzer. Well, There's Bro Kelpin with his bald head. He was always doing something different in the summertime. We stayed at Fort Chippewan, which is in the northeast corner of Alberta, until September 1961, when I was transferred to the Blood Indian Agency at Cardston in the southwest corner of Alberta. Here's Sam in his doghouse in the snow. One very cold winter day. When it got too cold, we often brought him into the house. We had an opportunity to take turns having a ride in this helicopter. That was a real thrill. Yes, we were quite privileged to do this. Anne had invited this uh, pilot and this assistant to come and have a meal with us. And before they went off, they asked us if we'd like a ride. And so we had two trips. I went on the second trip. This is looking over the main part of the village. That's where the Indian Residential School was located. There, you get a better view of the school there now. This is the... Uh, Our house is behind those trees. Yes. There it is right down there. This is Main Street, going up towards the Indian Affairs Office. This is the large building right here before you. Go any farther, we get into the lake. Jimmy, you were so thrilled with that helicopter ride. Right? We were swinging around again. See the church, parish hall with the light on, and our house right next door where these trees are. Jack Stewart lived in that big house beyond. Now oh, I joined the Mounted Police Corporal and uh, Park Warden on a trip they had to Sweetgrass and to Birch Creek. Now you see a herd of wild buffalo in Wood Buffalo National Park.
which straddles the boundary between Alberta and the Northwest Territories. At this point, we broke through the ice in a swampy area, had to stop, back up, then follow a different route to our destination on Birch Creek. A lot of rough country to go through. There's an abandoned cabin on Birch Creek where we stayed overnight. Mike Calpin examining fur in the basement of the Hudson Bay Company. Here are Jim and Carl coming home from church in a blizzard. A snowmobile going by. And finally, here come Anne and Sylvia. Tough going on such a windy, cold day. Snowmobile arriving at Old Fort, <coughs> Old Fort Point, which was close to the mouth of the Athabasca River. Here's Jim getting the harness ready for Sam to pull the toboggan. Observe the old boat, the Chuggerum, we bought for use while we were at Chip. You can also see in the background the large oil tanks holding the Indian Agency's supply of oil that we depended on for our heat. Sam certainly enjoyed this, and so did each member of the family. Noel Mackay bringing in a load of wood. There goes Jim and Sam, and here comes Jim and a friend. Sometimes I laid in the snow beside the trail, and Sam would spot me every time. He seemed to enjoy it, just as though it was a game, which of course it was. It was lots of fun. We are now en route to Fort McMurray to get money to pay treaty. We're approaching a stream that is overflowing and looks treacherous. And we need to check out the ice before putting the machine on it. This was a new machine at the time it had a V8 motor in it. The previous one that they had was much smaller and had just a, a six-cylinder engine. No comparison in the way they operated. The new one was so much superior. We are now on the return journey, retracing our outward track, which followed a road allowance cut through the forest in anticipation of a road to Lake Athabasca. While the survey line went right to the lake, the right-of-way became less and less cleared and consequently rougher the farther we went north. There were seldom any bridges, so we had to make do when crossing rivers and streams. Notice how rough it is now. Yet it gets worse. And one final shot showing myself in a red Grenfell cloth parka.